Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Why do you sound gloomy? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It's July 14, 2020. It's a Tuesday morning. Well, I can understand the gloom in uh, many people's uh, hearts and minds today, especially here in California. As uh, we wake up to the news that we are again on lockdown. So, yep, while that may be uh, a drawback, that may be uh, gloomy news, but we need to always look at um, the cheerful side of life, the cheerful side of things, and try to draw something good out of what may apparently be bad, okay? Let us always try to find the good behind anything that might be apparently bad. And that is very apropos with uh, uh, today's gospel. That uh, introduction is very much in conjunction with what we're going to hear today in today's gospel. So the gospel for today comes from St. Matthew. We're still continuing and now we are on chapter 11. Verses 20 to 24. What does St. Matthew tell us? Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done. What are the mighty deeds? What, what's another word for that? The miracles. The miracles. Okay. The miracles. So Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done, since they had not repented. Okay? Despite all of the miracles that our Lord did for them already, they still did not repent. They still did not recognize the kingdom of God in their midst. They still did not accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. So what does our Lord tell them? Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long ago repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. So what was the fault of these people? that our Lord was reproaching them for, was scolding them for? The fault, huh? Was that Joe? Their lack of faith, okay? Their lack of faith, which is expressed in their inability to recognize the hand of God in their lives. So God was already with them. Jesus was already with them physically in human form living among them imparting and giving them uh, teachings about God and the Trinity and everything about the revelation and making them understand that he was the one they had been waiting for as as the Messiah that has been foretold by all the prophets right and then he, he complemented all his teaching with miracles to make them realize that, yes, this is the Messiah. I am the Messiah that, that you have been waiting for. And to prove that to you, you know, I can, I can uh, perform miracles that you don't see every day. I mean, uh, and only God can perform these miracles to suspend the laws of nature in order to uh, make you 
uh, uh, wake up from your slumber and, and, and make you repent from your sins so that the grace of God can descend upon you and can, and can start working uh, wonders in you. But they did not recognize that. And they did not recognize that mostly because of pride. Mostly because of pride. Because they were too proud, they did not recognize Jesus. Because they were so full of themselves and selfish, they did not recognize Jesus. They thought that, oh, this is just a carpenter. Oh, this guy, well, he was just our neighbor, right? Wasn't he... The carpenter's son, uh, don't we know his cousins and people who live with, with him in the neighborhood? We know him. How could he be the son of God? How can he be the Messiah? Right? They were too proud to accept Jesus as the Messiah. And that is why they could not take it upon themselves to recognize Jesus. Now what's the lesson for all of us here? You know, God, God is present in our lives. God is involved in the affairs of our lives, in the affairs of our family, in the affairs of our communities, in the affairs of our nation, in the affairs of the world. Plenty of people have chosen to ignore God, to take Him out of the equation of their lives. Well, that is a big mistake. Okay? We have to be humble enough to recognize the hand of God in all the affairs of our lives. In every little thing of our lives, God is there. God exercises what is called His providence. Okay? Providence means to provide. As a father provides for his children, God provides. God is involved in our lives, whether actually, whether we like it or not. You see? And the more we try to stamp him out, the more we try to throw him out of our lives, you know what? The more he gets involved. Because, because just like a father who tries to have a lot of patience for his uh, children, uh, God tries to extend His patience with us even if we try to keep throwing Him out. Okay? But of course, there will always be consequences if we do not recognize the hand of God in our lives. Here in America, we have been trying to throw God out the window. Okay? We throw out the Ten Commandments from the, from the halls of justice. We uh, have been taking down statues that remind us of uh, the presence of God in our lives. We have been burning churches of late. See? Uh, uh, we have been trying to remove God in God we trust in our emblems and in our national symbols. These are all attempts to throw God out the window. But you see, these are just extreme consequences of having rejected God in our own souls in the first place. If we reject the presence of God in our personal lives, then it's so easy to reject God's presence in our communities, in our nation, in our world. And let me tell you, there has been a concerted effort to get God out of our lives for many, many years now. And what we are seeing today in America is just the after effect. And what we are seeing in many other parts of the world is just the after effect, the consequence of a concerted effort to get God out of the picture of the world. This is nothing new. This has been going on for centuries. For centuries, people have been trying to get God out of their lives. Let's not forget, that was what original sin was all about. You will be like gods, right? That was the temptation of the devil. So the substitution of God okay, 
and putting man in place of God to reign over himself and the world. Okay? There has been this concerted effort all through the centuries. We are just seeing perhaps the worst effect of it in our present day and age, especially here in America with the way that we're treating uh, uh, the churches, the Catholic churches, and all the symbols of faith that surround us. But before we even talk about what's going on in our country, what's going on in the world, let us focus on what we can do with our personal lives. Okay? How? How can we recognize God's presence in our lives personally? Okay? I'll give you three things to consider. First, be supernatural in your outlook, in the way you look at the ordinary affairs of your day. See? Always think about, well, what could God want from me about this situation I am facing now? Okay. What would God want from me today? Today, this day, what is God wanting me to accomplish? What is God wanting me to recognize about Him today? Okay. In this hour, in this period, what, where is God here? What does God want me to understand? Okay. Be supernatural. Don't, don't, don't just react humanly because that's the, very, that's the easiest thing to do. When somebody uh, 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 disappoints you, when somebody displeases you, when, even when good things happen to you, you think, oh, wow, that was my accomplishment. Only I did that, right? <laughs> Reminds me of Governor Cuomo and, uh, and, uh, uh, who, who said that, oh, you know, this pandemic, we, we flattened the curve. It was not God who did that. I did that, right? <laughs> Even our accomplishments are a gift from God. It's a gift from God. Remember that our talents and our abilities came from God to begin with. We wouldn't be what who we are if God didn't have a hand in fashioning us, in giving us the grace to be who we are and do what we can do. <clears throat> God is present. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so be supernatural in your outlook about things going on around you. Is God in this pandemic? Does God have a hand in this pandemic? You bet you he does, right? You bet he does. And, and there must be a reason why he is allowing all of these things to happen to us. There must be a reason. But if we are not supernatural in our outlook, if we don't factor in God's will in this whole pandemic situation, we will be lost. We will be gloomy. Right? We will be gloomy. We will lose our sanity. But if we look at things from a supernatural perspective all the time, then we will begin to understand there must be a reason for my own good, for the good of the community, for the good of the country, for the good of the world. There must be something good. That will come out of this. This is the way to be supernatural. Second, have gratitude all the time. Okay? A grateful soul is somebody who recognizes that all the good things that happen in our lives is a consequence of the grace of God. The grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God. Your own effort in achieving these good things even that is part of the grace of God. Okay? The grace of God. You have to recognize that and be thankful for it. And the third part of acknowledging God's presence in our lives is to have the willingness to actually do the will of God for you at every moment of the day. When we don't do the will of God, we're kicking Him out of our lives because we only want to do what we want to do. <laughs> okay? we, we only want to accomplish what we want to accomplish. And if it is not in line with what God wants us to do, then we are not acknowledging the presence of God in our lives. We are kicking Him out. 
And when that happens, whatever you accomplish is not going to do any good to you. Not going to do any good to you. Now, how do we recognize God's will in our lives, by the way, again? Eh? You, children, <laughs> how do we recognize God's will in our lives, Joe? The parents. Through our parents. Eh? Through your parents. Your parents are God's agents in this world to help you understand the will of God for your lives. Okay? And that is why if you don't obey your parents, if you don't listen to your parents, if you ignore what your parents tell you, you are ignoring God. You are stamping out God and throwing Him out the window if you don't listen to your parents. Okay? Your parents are God's instruments to convey to you and for you his divine will. So learn to obey. Learn to cooperate with your parents. Learn to support what your parents are doing for you. Because it is tantamount to obeying the will of God. Okay? So these three things have supernatural outlook, have a sense of gratitude and act on the will of God. These are three ways by which you can always recognize the hand of God in your personal lives. In that way, you will reap. You will reap the rewards that God has been wanting to give you and has prepared for you at the end of time. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. bye. Uh-oh, only Joseph said bye. <laughs>